us would be as a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if there is iman along with it must come our soul Islam was not spread at the point of the soul people heard and saw Islam Islam requires mutual relationship not only among Muslims but also with the respect of other people dedication by stones and deviation by arrows to stay away from intoxicants from gambling from drugs from alcohol and make not your own hand the call of your destruction whether you're rich or poor whether you're black or white whether you're king or a pauper And before we Muslims, we offer salah, we remove our footwear. And it is the commandment of Almighty God given to Moses, peace be upon him, which is mentioned in the glorious Quran in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 11 and 12. فَلَمَّا أَتَاهَا نُودِيَ يَا مُوسَى إِنِّي أَنَا رَبُّكْ فَقْلَانَ عَلَيْكْ إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ تُوَى And when Moses, he approached the valley of Tuwa, he heard a voice. O oh Moses, indeed I am your Lord, so take off thy shoes, off thy feet, for thou art in the sacred valley of Tuwa. And a similar message is mentioned in the Bible. It is mentioned in the book of Exodus, chapter number 3, verse number 5. Draw knee hither, take off thy shoes, off thy feet, for thou art on sacred grounds. And a similar message is repeated in the book of Acts, chapter number 7, verse number 33. Put off thy shoes, of thy feet, for thou art on sacred grounds. And we Muslims, we are given the option of removing our footwear or wearing our footwear. It is mentioned in Surah Abu Dawood, Volume 1, Book of Salah, Chapter number 240, Hadith number 652. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that be different from the Jews, for they for their prayers always remove their footwear. A similar message is mentioned in Surah Abu Dawood, Volume 1, Book of Salah, Chapter number 240, Hadith number 63. Amr bin Shoaib, on the authority of his father, said that his grandfather said that he had seen the Prophet, peace be upon him, offering salah both with footwear as well as without a footwear. So we Muslims, we can offer with our footwear as well as without a footwear. But when we offer with our footwear, we have to see to it that we clean the souls. And why do we remove our footwear? Or why when we offer with our footwear we clean the souls? Because we are clean and hygienic people. We want our place of worship to be clean. And before we offer salah, there is a call for prayer. And different religions have different way of calling people. For example, the Jews, they use the trumpet. It is mentioned in the book of Numbers, chapter number 10, verse number 1, 2 and 3. The Lord spake to Moses, peace be upon him and told him to build two trumpets of silver and use it to call the assembly. The Christians, they use a church bell. Some tribes, they use a drum. But we Muslims, we use the human voice. And this is called as the Adhan. And the person who gives the Adhan is called as a Madhan. And the human voice, it is far more melodious and soothing compared to the drums, the church bells and the trumpets. And it has a greater impact on the human mind. There are many non-Muslims who have accepted Islam just by hearing the Adhan. It had such a great impact on their minds that they accepted Islam. But unfortunately, in Bombay, the Adhans, they are not as melodious. They cause inconvenience rather than tranquility. So I would request the Muazzin in Bombay that they should listen to the Adhan of Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. That is an example of how an Adhan should be like. And besides the Adhan being melodious and soothing, it carries a message. But many of the non-Muslims, they do not understand the message of the Adhan. Many non-Muslims say that, you know, Emperor Akbar, he built so many monuments for the Muslims. And during the time of the Mughals, no wonder the Muslims, they mention his name in the Adhan five times a day. Some may think it's just a joke, but many of the non-Muslims, they think like this. And many of the non-Muslims, in the Western movies, there is 
a person who's dressed up in the Arab gown, who's a terrorist, who's a villain, and before he draws out a sword, he shouts Allahu Akbar, as if Allahu Akbar is a war cry. So many non-Muslims did not understand the message of the Adhan. We need to explain to the non-Muslims. We need to give the translation of the Adhan to the non-Muslims. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. We are not praising Emperor Akbar, or it is not a war cry, but we are saying that Allah is the greatest. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the servant and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hayya ala salah, come to prayer. Hayya ala al-falah, come to success. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. La ilaha illallah. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should explain the translation of the Adhan to the non-Muslims, to those who are unaware of it. In fact, the Adhan can be considered as a sign of unity. Any Muslim from any part of the world, from any nationality, from any country, when he hears the Adhan, he knows that it is time to pray. In fact, the Adhan read in Arabic can be considered as an international anthem of the Muslims. And before we Muslims we offer salah, it is compulsory for us to do wudu, to do ablution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maidah chapter number 5, verse number 6, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, idha qumtum li salah, when you stand for prayer, faghsilu wujuhakum, then wash your faces, wa aydiyakum ilal marafiq, and your hands up till your elbows. وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ And wipe your forehead and wash your feet up till your ankles. So doing wudu is compulsory before salah. And a similar message is mentioned in the Bible. It's mentioned in the book of Exodus, chapter number 40, verse number 31 and 32. Moses and Aaron washed their hands and feet there at. And when they entered into the tent of congregation, and when they approached the altar, they washed as the Lord had commanded Moses, peace be upon him. A similar message is mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 21, verse number 26, that Paul, along with his men, washed in front of the Lord. The reason why we Muslims do wudu, it is for cleanliness and hygiene. And besides this, it is also a form of psychological preparation, a mental preparation before we communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "It is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, Volume One, Book of Salah, Chapter Number 56, Hadith Number 438, that the earth is made for me and my followers as a place to do sujood, as a masjid. So the whole earth is made a place to do sujood as a masjid. But naturally, where you do sujood, where you pray, it should be a clean place. And it is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, Volume One." Book of Adhan, chapter number 75, hadith number 692. Our blood Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before offering salah, his shoulder touched the shoulder of the companion. His feet touched the feet of the companion. And it is mentioned in Surah Abu Dawood, volume 1, book of salah, chapter number 245, hadith number 666. Our blood Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before offering salah, he said, stand shoulder to shoulder, closing up the gaps, and... Do not leave any opening for the devil. Irrespective whether you are rich or poor, whether you are black or white, whether you are king or a pauper, when you stand for salah, you should stand shoulder to shoulder. And regarding offering salah, it is mentioned in the glorious Quran, in a nutshell, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 144. al masjid haram Then turn thy faces to the sacred mosque. Wherever you are, turn thy faces in that direction. So it is compulsory that when we offer salah, we have to turn our faces towards the sacred mosque, that is Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. And if I happen to travel in India, and if I do not know the Qibla, that is the direction, and if I have to ask a non-Muslim the direction, I will not ask him where is the west. I will ask him where is the east, and I will face in the opposite direction. Because he may think that we Muslims, we are worshipping the western world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, 
verse number 238. And when you stand for salah, stand in a devout frame of mind. And reciting Surah Fatiha is compulsory in every salah. It is mentioned in the glorious Quran in Surah Hijr chapter number 15, verse number 87. الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ Verily we have given thee the oft-repeated seven verses and the Grand Quran. Verily we have given thee the oft-repeated seven verses that is Surah Fatiha, that is called as the minor Quran. And the other major portion of the Quran is called as a grand Quran. And the word Ruku is mentioned in the glorious Quran 13 times. And the word Sujood is mentioned 92 times in the glorious Quran. And there is a separate chapter, chapter number 32, that is called as Surah Sajda, that is a prostration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, Chapter number three, verse number forty-three. Ya Maryam, li Rabbi warka ima O Mary, prostrate and bow down with those who bow down. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah Hajj, chapter number twenty-two, verse number seventy-seven. Ya ayu aladina amanur kau wasjudu wa abudu Rabbakum wa faalul khaira la alakum tuflihun. O you who believe, prostrate, bow down, and adore your Lord, and humble yourselves that ye may prosper. And all the prophets of Almighty God, they the sujood. It is mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter number 17, verse number 3, that Abraham fell on his face. It is mentioned in the book of Numbers, chapter number 20, verse number 6, that Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. It is mentioned in the book of Joshua, chapter number 5, verse number 14, Joshua fell on his face. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 26, verse number 39, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he enters the Garden of Gets name, he takes a few steps further and he fell on his face. So all the prophets of Almighty God, they fell on their faces. And no acrobat, no gymnast can also do better than the way we Muslims do, putting the highest point of our body, that is the forehead, to the lowest point of the ground. An example by an example by which we abide. And as I said earlier, that the psychologists, they tell us that the mind it is not directly under our control, but our body is directly under our control. So there's no better way than putting the highest point of the body, that is the forehead, to the lowest point of the ground and saying, Subhana Rabbil Allah, glory be to him is the most high thrice. And regarding the minute details, we have to look at our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is mentioned in the glorious Quran, Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. It is mentioned in several places in the glorious Quran. In Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 32. Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 132. Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 59. Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 192. Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 1. Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 20. Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 46. Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 54. Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 56. Surah Muhammad, chapter number 47, verse number 33. It is mentioned in Surah Mujadila, chapter number 58, verse number 13, as well as in Surah Taghaboon, chapter number 64, verse number 12. So all these verses, they say that Atiyullah wa Atiyur Rasul, obey Allah and obey His Messenger. And it is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume 1, book of Adhan, chapter number 18, hadith number 604, as well as Sahih Bukhari, volume number 9, hadith number 352. Abdul Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli." Pray as you see me pray. And salah is the most important pillar of Islam after belief, after faith. It is mentioned in Surah Dariyat, chapter number fifty-one, verse number fifty-six. "Wa ma khalaqtul jinn wal ins illa liyabudun." That I have not created jinn and mankind except to worship me. The word ibadah is derived from the root word abd, which means to serve. And it is important for every servant to obey his master. Similarly, we are the servants, we are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is important that we obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many people think that salah is the only form of ibadah. But salah is not the only form of ibadah, but it is the most important form of ibadah. And salah is a form of rendering obedience. 
Only if you know what you are reciting, only if you know what you recite in a salah, then only you will be able to obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, it is very important that you know what you are reciting. And you should read the translation of what you are reciting. Then only you will be able to obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are various dangers. Let's look at the dangers of not offering salah. If a person does not offer salah, his iman, his faith, it could become weak. Or even it could get lost. Because a person, he thinks that the good things that he has is due to the worldly things and he goes away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There would also be a lack of discipline. A person, he may do foul play and go away from the surat al-mustaqim, that is a straight path. And a person will also have lack of inner peace. How much ever wealth you have, it will not give you peace. Many people, they do not offer salah due to the lack of knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 185. Every soul shall have a taste of death. But the final recompense will be on the day of judgment. For whosoever is safe from the hellfire and has entered the gardens of paradise. He shall have achieved the true objectives. For verily the life of this world is nothing except chattels of deception. Now let's look at the benefits of offering Salah. There are various benefits of offering Salah. Salah is a way of life. It caters to the spiritual aspects of a human being and to the physical needs of the body. And Salah, it increases your faith. It strengthens your faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 2. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجْلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ The true believers are those, when Allah's name is mentioned, they feel a tremor in their heart. And when His signs are rehearsed, it strengthens their faith. And they put their complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fatiha, chapter number 1, verse number 5 to 7. Thee alone we worship and thee alone we ask for help. Guide us to a straight path. Surat al amta alayhim. The path of those whom you are pleased with. Not the path of those who deserve your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. So Salah, it teaches us discipline. A true Muslim, when he gets up in the morning and he offers the Fajr Salah, and the Muad then says, As salatu khayrum minan naum, that prayer is better than sleep. His morning starts early and he has a bright day. And when he offers different salah at different intervals of the day, and he ends his day with the Isha prayer before going to sleep. Salah, it also increases the brotherhood and the fraternity, unity among the Muslims. When different people of the community come together, it increases the love and compassion between them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 13. Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakari wa unsa, wa ja'allakum shu'uban wa qaba'il li ta'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allah yatqakum, inna Allah alimun khabir. O mankind, we have created you from a single pair of a male and female, and divided you into nations and tribes, so that you may know each other. Not that you may despise each other. And the most honored among you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. And Allah is all-knowing, well-acquainted. The criterion for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not caste, it's not color, it's not wealth, it's not sex, but it is righteousness. It is God-consciousness. It is taqwa. It is piety. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Humaza, chapter number 104, verse number 1, Woe to every kind of scandal monger and backbiter. So Salah restrains us from scandal mongering and backbiting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 11 and 12. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, 
لا يسقر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الإيمان ومن لم يطب فأولئك هم الظالمون Oh, you believe, let not some men laugh at the others. It may be that the latter may be better than the former. Nor let some women laugh at the others. It may be that the latter may be better than the former. And do not defame each other, nor be sarcastic to one another, nor call others by offensive nicknames. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says in verse number 12, Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu jtanibu kathiran min al-dhan, inna ba'd al-dhan ism. ولا تجسسوا ولا يغطب بعضكم بعضا أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله إن الله تواب رحيم All you who believe avoid suspicion for suspicion in most cases is a sin and do not spy on each other and do not speak ill about each other behind their backs that is backbiting and Allah further says that would you like to eat the dead meat of your own brother? Nay, you would abhor it. So if you do backbiting, if you speak ill about your brother behind his back, it is as if you are eating the dead meat of your own brother. And eating dead meat is prohibited. So if you eat the dead meat of your own brother, it is a double sin. And even the cannibals did not eat the dead meat of their own brothers. So if you do backbiting, it is as if you are eating the dead meat of your own brother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says that nay, you would abhor it. So Salah restrains us from many evil things. And Salah, it teaches us to be truthful. It teaches us how to deal with people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Kabo, chapter number 29, verse number 45. أُتْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْحَانِ الْفَحْشَيِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Recite from the book what is revealed to thee and establish prayer. Indeed, prayer restrains from shameful and unjust deeds. So, Salah restrains us from shameful and unjust deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَحُوقَ when truth is hurled against falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. So Salah, it teaches us to be truthful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2, verse number 42 and 43. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2, verse number 42 and 43.